don't forget guys it's free to subscribe and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the first part of the chair okay we're going to try and join these two together and it will fit together like that except it will be in the middle there and that will be jointed to that and that's the front of the chair you okay Jay? yeah that's the front of the chair that's step one and what we do we get our template and we mark to the very top there and we mark round and then we can shade it there's one and we do the same here but this has to be done really precisely guys like that in the middle okay and that will sink into there and you're going in about 15 millimeters now you can get an adult to help you just do the marking out there that's quite difficult okay about 15 millimeters and shade off what you're going to chisel out okay so that's your they don't have to be marked because that will just sink in there that's your template now before you even do that you may want to put it in the vise and you'll see on this one we've um, taken off some of the leg it's called a chamfer to make it look neater okay so there's don't forget that's what we're making and you may want to put it in the vise and just gently use a small block plane Ooh, just it I've just sharpened this block plane so and just take off if you want just the corners okay you can do it after it's been made but it's much harder to because of course it's all been glued together that's five neat ones make sure your plane blade's sharp and it's kept on its side that's a block plane for the younger viewers okay and now we join together then the next thing put your work very low in the vise almost level with the vise jaws these are vise jaws and that's in a woodworking vise then get a mallet and a chisel okay here's your chisel put the flat end there flat end there against okay, so there and then gently tap it if your wood moves tighten the vise seems pretty good and then very carefully and try not to split your wood so a little indents You're, I'm going to do this quite a bit slowly because it's important you see this technique and not too heavy please because you'll snap your wood and you have to cut it all up very expensive mistake keep your chisel vertical Jake can you just see how vertical it is show the viewers me just tapping it so they're not heavy taps if you tap too hard obviously you're going to break your own wood then what you can do you can either scoop the material out from this end or I tend to do it from here but we've got to go vertical here for vertically so I'm going to turn the chisel around so it's like a scooping action there and the chisel must be very sharp if it's not sharp get a, a friendly adult to sharpen it for you or well, I have done a little video on sharpening and you're going to quickly take off little bits start from that end and work back don't go mad just take little bits off at a time keep the edges nice and level so that means they're vertical edges they must be vertical so keep chiseling taking it from here Jake any questions and we'll come back to you when we finish yes so how's it going really well so we're just, as I say we're doing the mortise and tenon joints for the legs these legs are slightly bigger than this original one I've got to go slightly lower there and make sure it's lower there as well keep it really low in the vise you don't break it into two I'm going to take the chisel so it's got that scooping action remember the chisels are really sharp guys they should be if they're not sharp what are they Jake they're dull they're, <laughs> they're dangerous <laughs> a tool that's not sharp is dangerous because it means you put more pressure on and then that's when the accidents happen 
and turn it around and we're skimming off a little bit there. I'll do another little bit. I quite like this. Obviously don't chisel it near to your body. If you do, you may have an accident. We don't want that, guys, to any of you. There's a little bit of a divot there. So I'm just going to take off that little lump there. Just move that camera around there a bit. Okay. And you can turn. As you come down to the cut, you turn it and the piece of material, waste material will come out. So twist the chisel as you come to the end. Twist the chisel. Remember that, guys. Let's put it together. So we're making this part here. There's our leg. There's our rail. Don't go mad. If you're worried about the wood splitting and it can split the first time, should be a tight joint. Oh, nice one. Nice and vertical. You can get our little tri-square or large tri-square and make sure it's level. So it's slightly out. Yes, look. So it's that square. That's the purpose of the tri-square. You can check everything. Would it be more accurate to use a bigger tri-square than a smaller one? Yes, definitely. And then the same here. Hopefully this yes, Jake. I um, I think you should put the wood down a little lower oh, yes. so it's flush with the vice. Yes, good point. Otherwise, it may split it. it. Turn it around as well. Put it in. Now, I don't really want to damage that wood there. So you can use a scrap piece of wood. And make sure it's a scrap and not the piece of wood you're going to use. A bit of scrap wood, any bit of scrap wood, as long as it's not your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can, this is where the smaller tri-square can come in handy, if you've got a smaller project, but that will just fit. And that's pretty good. Look, square. Yeah. And square. If it isn't square, you'll see a slight line where the light's coming through but it's square brilliant brilliant and you can do it that way of course look. yeah try square okay so that there is the front can you see that part there is a bigger version there we've made and now we're going to make the back from two other pieces of timber and this is easier so with your template or with your adult helping you mark it out you can mark out both of these and we'll come back to you in a minute and start this off what's next right we're going to make this frame at the back now so it's got a rail and another rail and the frame the two legs okay remember we're making teddy bear stool uh, so you, i use a template and you can get your adult to help you you mark your two another new two mortise and tenon joints that's the joint we're using, mortise and tenon, don't forget guys. And I've done it there and I've shaded it and I've marked up left and right. Yes, so, rainy day 2020. Um, I'm going to put this in the bottom of the vise and then I'm going to chisel out these. But before I even do that, it may be a good idea, as I did in the last one, before we glue it together, just take off a little bit with the block plane. Now you may not have a block plane, so you may want to use a smoothing plane. Or even a jack plane. Or jack planes even larger. Yeah, so I'll put that in the view so you can see them. They're not too expensive, you, you can gradually build up a set, or you may have somebody at home that's got some. And we'll do a little bit on here. Hold it nice and firmly. Nice sharp blade on that. And put your planes, guys, down, not face down on their side. It stops you damaging the blade. And if you damage the blade, you've got to resharpen it. And it takes time. So we're going to chisel this out. We're time lapse this. Is that the word, Jake? Time yeah. lapse? And we'll take out that to about. I'm going to go, I'm going to say between 10 and 15 millimetres. Now you may ask how much that is. That's your 10 millimetre chisel. You're going to go in that deep plus that much. So we're going to go in about this distance into the material. Of course, you can measure it as well. Yeah, and you can see it's going to be the same. 
about 15 millimeters. If it's less than that, the joint's too weak. But remember, it's a mortise and tenon. That's an, an open mortise and tenon, isn't it, on the end? Yeah. But this will be a closed one, and it'll be a blind hole. Won't, we don't go all the way through. Now, this is really important. As you start chiseling, guys, as before, you're not going to make the mistake of chiseling too hard. So do what you did before, go round, form your hole. Yes, Jake? Could you use like a drill bit to get rid of the middle? You can do. I'm not going to suggest that at the moment because using power tools, not everyone's got power tools. And drills, the type of drill bit you use can be quite dangerous. So the chisels are dangerous, but you actually, you're safer with these probably than a, a spinning drill bit because um, you're in more, more control of it. I'll show you the sort of cutter you might have to use. You might have to use. I think it's called a forcing a bit or even a spade a bit. Yeah, like this one. And a 10 mil version, that's it. Oh, it will be that one there. You could use those, I, I bet you can see, you can go awfully wrong very quickly. You know? I'm not gonna suggest you do that. So when you go in, you go, the more the bevel side is on the inside and the flat side is on the outside and you chisel and you turn it around and you chisel. It's so important that those ends are vertical so it fits, okay? And then you turn your, chi turn your chisel around. Okay, so we're making our frame, guys. Don't forget the frame at the back. And in this step, I'm just gonna show you again how to do this more tenon. So you've marked all the way around and you've chiseled it all the way around. Done the same here. And you must chisel vertically. You've shaded it so you know which bit you're taking off. So it fits perfectly. And you're gonna turn the chisel around so it is the flat side on the outside there. Get it nice and vertical. Vertical, obviously, you can double check, I suppose. Try square. Um, and then you're going to turn the chisel around like the sort of scooping action. Hold the chisel for, um, firmly. Don't go mad, just go very slowly because you don't want to break out too much wood. And as you get to the back, just twist it and it should break off there. If it doesn't, I'm going to make that a bit deeper. And then twist, okay? Okay, it's nearly there. Yeah. Now this is a bit tricky. I can see there's a knot where a branch came out of the tree at you know, that point of the piece of wood, and that's causing a few problems. So if you've got a knot in your wood, avoid it. Get your adult friend to give you another bit of timber. Okay, Jake, there's the chair. This is um, the next step. So I'm going to show the viewers, or you're going to show the viewers, you can use this other method yeah. using the flat bottom cutter or the auger bit. So 10 millimeter. This is really recommended for larger projects, but just would yeah. really show them anyway. It's nice and vertical, handheld, power tool. Yeah, and you just go in. About that far, maybe a bit deeper. But we recommend you don't use this method for this size project. This is 15, 10 millimeters bit, bit, and we're going 15 millimeters in depth. Yeah. And the next one, Jake? Next one. And the next one. Now, interestingly, if you brush that off, um, each cut should really overcut the next. So the, don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Can you just blow that clean again, Jay? That's it. Can you see? Each cut covers the next cut as well. Right. So we're going to chisel this one out, finish that off, and we'll come back to you.